Hello. Do you hear me? Okay. Welcome, everybody. Um, to those of you in the room and also those of you joining us online, um, my name is Jennifer Kelleher. I'm the program lead for governance, equity, and rights in the Global Protected and Conserved Areas program in the IUCN Secretariat. And I'm joined today by Thora Amend, who is our Vice Chair for Governance in the IUCN World Commission of Protected Areas and a key partner of IUCN Global Protected Areas program, Phil Franks, who's leading the program on conservation communities and equity in IIED. And today we're gonna to be presenting a new tool that has been evolving over the past number of years, um, led by IIED. Um, but we'll also speak to you a little bit about the importance of this tool in the broader context. So just to give this a little bit of broader context, um, I just wanted to flag for you very quickly two key milestone reports you might have heard about. They have been presented during this Congress. Protected Planet Report, um, presented by the World uh, Conservation Monitoring Centre in Cambridge, reported on IT Target 11, which was all about equitably managed area-based conservation. And in that report, we know that we achieved our targets. We hit 17% of terrestrial area-based conservation. We tripled the number of marine protected areas, but the qualitative elements, so the IT target quality elements around fairness and equity were very poorly understood and there's still a lot more work to be done. We also had a landmark um, report called Territories of Life, which is reported on the high biodiversity values that are found in lands and territories that belong to indigenous peoples, local communities and private actors. And we don't know about these areas. We're, they're estimated to be a lot larger, a lot greater than um, current protected areas. And so there's a huge opportunity here for increasing area-based conservation, but again, the key word being equity. So I'll just flag the IUCN green list. As I said, I work in the Global Protected and Conserved Areas program. It's the home program for the IUCN green list, which is the new standard for sustainable, equitable and effective area-based conservation. And I'll just mention that this is really a key avenue for achieving equity. So achieving what IT Target 11 couldn't, we have great potential within this program and within this framework, because the first component of that focuses on good governance. And within that component, we have a, a strong focus and emphasis on equity and rights. So I'm gonna pass over now to Phil Franks and um, he'll take you through equity and the SAGE tool. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, Jenny. Okay. So what do we mean by equity? This is a very, very brief um, overview um, based on quite a lot of work over many years, actually, in the realm of environmental justice and equitable payments for ecosystem services. So this framework essentially shows equity as having three key dimensions of recognition, which is about the respect for actors' rights and their identities, knowledge systems, values, and institutions. Equity and procedure, which is about the inclusiveness of rule and decision-making, transparency, accountability, access to justice and dispute resolution. And lastly, equity in the distribution or the sharing of costs and benefits among different actors. And in conservation, particularly how, the, how costs experienced by some actors, such as human wildlife conflict, can be mitigated. This little red triangle was included actually in the CBD decision from the last COP, a decision on equitable governance of protected areas. So this uh, framing of equity is getting uh, some kind of fairly broad-based um, interest and support. Now we're talking here about equity and governance. Governance being about who has the authority to decide objectives and strategies, how these decisions are made, how other actors influence these decisions and how those with authority and responsibility are held to account, as opposed to management, which is much more about implementing the or delivering on the agreed objectives and strategies. Um, and of course, there's some overlap and um, we don't need to worry too much about that, but it is really important that the focus of the discussion on equity is around man governance, not management. Equity is largely a matter of governance. Um, 
So when we talk of governance, those who have heard about um, governance in the context of protected areas will know that we talk about two things. We talk about the type of governance, which is about how the authority is shared between different actors, and I'm not going to say any more about that. We talk about the quality of governance. That's the performance of a particular governance arrangement in terms of the principles of good governance, where good, as Jenny has said, is interpreted as being both effective and equitable, fair or just. So this is what we're talking about here with the Green List and SAGE, the, the tool that I'm going to talk about is the quality of governance. So the, these principles of effective and equitable governance, these are the 10 principles we use with the SAGE tool. SAGE stands for Site Assessment of Governance and Equity. We use this framework. It is based on the IUCN framework um, in the publication on governance of protected areas, but boiled down to essentially these 10 principles. The significance of the, the pink column on the right and the blue is that eight of these 10 principles are also issues of equity. Equity is largely about governance and these are the eight principles which are, and as you can see, they map onto the three dimensions of equity. The first two are about respect for rights and, and respect for actors themselves and their knowledge and values. That's the recognition. The procedure are these four that I mentioned earlier. Um, equity and distribution being the mitigation of negative impacts and, uh, and benefits being equitably shared. And then there are a couple at the end that are more broad. So this is the framework we use in the tool that's called SAGE. So what is this SAGE tool? So essentially it is a tool used by the stakeholders and rights holders or for short actors of a protected or conserved area to assess the quality of governance of the area and related governance arrangements. And those could be um, a landscape level or they could be to do with local government um, institutions that, that are uh, to which the PA is, is linked in some way or, or um, that have influence over the governance of the PA. The purpose, the primary objective, is to enable these actors at a site level to improve governance and equity of the conservation work. In some cases also to uh, provide information for um, actors at higher levels, we might call them external actors from the PA point of view, um, and, and could be even be used for reporting to CBD. And SAGE tool has been suggested, is in actually the list of indicators that could be used for reporting against the global biodiversity framework. The approach of SAGE is modeled on PA management effectiveness assessment uh, using a particularly the MET tool, which many people will be familiar with. Essentially, it's a questionnaire with about 30 questions and four possible responses to each question. The difference is that SAGE is always uses a multi-stakeholder process where in the first day, it's a two-day process, first day, the stakeholders meet separately. Uh, here's a picture of of ladies in Indonesia meeting to uh, go through the questionnaire and discuss the issues and then and there's another group of men somewhere else and government officials in another group so they do it separately and then the second day they come together they discuss their results and their different opinions and um, what might be done to improve the situation and the final output is a set of actions to improve the situation or ideas they need further refining but at least some ideas for action to improve so the process, as I said, is about uh, stakeholders and rights holders. It's themselves, it's those people that do the assessment. And there is a third phase, which we call an impact booster. The, the, the actions are the key. That's why they, we do this and supporting the, the actors to implement and, and monitor and learn from their experience. So the countries where SAGE has been used in the last two years are listed here, um, including countries in Africa, Asia and Latin America and Europe, Greece and UK, you'll see on that list. We're going to hear case studies from three of these countries, Greece, Colombia and Bolivia. And I'm going to very briefly show you some results from Zambia. So in Zambia, uh, SAGE was used in a conservancy, which is um, a form of community-based natural resource management in southern Africa. It's called Mulabesi. It's on the boundaries of the Kafui National Park, which also means that it's within the new Kaza landscape, uh, five country landscape. And um, so the SAGE was done there about 18 months ago. 
it um, typically the output. I, I, I don't expect you to read this, but I want to emphasize there are three things in a summary of the output. What first is this green arrow? What are the challenges? And different groups come up with different challenges. Are there major, any major differences between the group's scores? So they're selecting answers to the question and the, 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 they correspond to scores from zero to three. Are there any differences? And ideas for action to improve the scores and reduce the differences because the differences are also very important. And here you can see, this is for law enforcement. The park managers, the left, most left-hand column, um, have a higher, uh, f f believe that the, 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 the fairness, this is about the fairness of law enforcement, is higher than the other stakeholders believe it to be. And that difference is important. Why, why is that the case? Uh, and, and what can we do to make uh, that, to reduce the difference? And in other words, to have people with a common understanding and a common um, appreciation of, of the fairness of law enforcement. And of course, you want to push all the scores up towards three. And then lastly, this is um, how you can present the results of the entire assessment. So we were just looking at law enforcement, which is in the middle there. But for the other eight, seven principles, there is exactly the same set of scores. In each case, let's say benefit sharing, there is a score, there is the park management group first on the left, then the community women, then the community men, and then the other stakeholders in this case were NGOs. And you can see community men who actually have most influence over how benefit sharing money is spent, felt that it was excellent and highly equitable and the others were not quite so positive about it. And again, a discussion about why that is the case, and particularly the women had a, a lower a score. Why that is the case is really important and leads to actions to improve. So with that, I'm going to hand over to uh, the video from Greece. So we'll get out of this and hopefully straight into the video. So this is a SAGE assessment in, in a national park in Greece. και ότι ο καθένας εξέφερε την άποψή του, όποια και να ήταν αυτή. Και μου άρεσε που πολλοί διαφορετικοί χρήστες, ε, ε, ειδικά με τους χρήστες μου άρεσε πάρα πολύ, που συμμετείχαν πάρα πολύ και ο καθένας εξέφερε την άποψή του. Ουσιαστικά μέσα από αυτή την άσκηση όλοι καταλαβαίνουμε α, σε τι βαθμό βρισκόμαστε, πού υπολείπεται η κάθε υπηρεσία ή ο κάθε φορέας, και ουσιαστικά μας βάζει σε ένα κλίμα να αρχίσουμε να κάνουμε αυτοκριτική και να δούμε τι θα πρέπει να βελτιώσουμε για να πάνε τα πράγματα στο καλύτερο. Δεν μπορώ να ξεχωρίσω μία ερώτη, μία ερώτηση να πω ότι αυτή ήταν πιο χρήσιμη από τις υπόλοιπε. Όλες οι ερωτήσεις και όλες, όλη η συζήτηση που, ε, και τα θέματα που συζητήθηκαν ε, στη σημερι, σημερινή ημερίδα ήταν ε, χρήσιμα. Ε, πιστεύω οι απόψει μας και τα αποτελέσματα των ε, των συζητήσεων αυτών να έχουν κάποια θετικά αποτελέσματα ως προς την περιοχή του Εθνικού Πάρκου του ΔΕΛΤΟ ΠΕΒΟ. Σήμερα, σήμερα εμπλουτίσαμε περισσότερο τις γνώσεις μας με τη σύσκεψη αυτή που έγινε, με τη συζήτηση που έγινε. Ήταν κάτι ιδιαίτερο, κάτι πρωτότυπο. Ήταν κάτι το οποίο το είχαμε ανάγκη, θεωρώ, και περισσότερο το ΔΕΛΤΑ ΕΒΟ.
Yeah, so we're moving to Colombia, and I'll hand over to our IT section. To um, we have, I think, we have uh, hopefully our colleague Juliana from GIZ in Colombia. Juliana, can you introduce yourself before you start? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, hi. Good afternoon. Thank you, Phil, for the invitation. Uh, my name is Juliana Echever Echeverri. I work with GIZ in Colombia, and thank you because today I will be presenting the application of SAGE to the Andaki Natural Municipal Park in the Amazon region of Colombia. Uh, it is actually a candidate um, OECM, and um, we believe it's the first time that SAGE uh, is being applied to an um, OECM. Uh, this SAGE evaluation was made possible with the support of the Local Protected um, Areas Regional Project implemented by GIZ, ICLE, and uh, IUCN. Uh, we are in Brazil, Ecuador, Peru, and Colombia. And the project applying OECM criteria to the Colombian co context, supported by the GF, GFA Small Grants Program, implemented by ResNatur, in, uh, Humboldt Institute, Fundación Natura, and the Local Protected Areas Project, and the Euroclima, thank you, a Euroclima Plus uh, program supported by Expertise France, GIZ, and the International Institute for the Environment and Development. And also, thank you to um, everyone, everyone that um, uh, was involved in this in this application. Uh, Dora, you, and the uh, the people from the uh, from the uh, local government. Um, I think uh, we are. Do you have the, the presentation? Should I um, share the presentation or? Yes. You can. Oh, I have to, sorry. It, that's fine. Yeah, you, we can uh, go to the next one. Please. Yes, well, uh, the Andaki Municipal Natural Park is located in the municipality of Belén de los Andaquíes in the Colombian Amazon region. It covers an area of 268 square kilometers. Uh, we apply the OECM criteria with different right, right holders and stakeholders related to the area, and it was evaluated through the National Route for Reporting OECM, and currently it has been verified by the World Conservation Monitoring Center, the, the database. Um, the results showing, uh, showed in this uh, that in many cases, uh, including this one governance aspect, could be enhanced. So we have to, the opportunity to, to apply it to this to this national um, a natural park. Uh, due to the, uh, we can go to the next one, please. The next, yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, due to the pandemic, the sage methodology was adapted to be applied in field and virtually. Uh, for the preparation phase, uh, virtual training was developed by the Euroclima project uh, and IIED with different Colombian institutions, together with uh, SAGE developers, conservation practitioners, and public institutions from Bolivia and Honduras. We all also had the opportunity uh, to share with, uh, with those countries. Uh, the following steps were held, held through virtual meetings between the project team and on-site fa facilitators. It's stakeholders and right holders groups were identified, uh, indigenous people, rural communities, local and regional governments, uh, NGOs, uh, people from uh, academies, and, and the natural, the national natural parks um, were identified as well. Uh, they all participated in the assessments uh, for the SAGE uh, evaluation. The governance principles and related questions were prioritized based on the content, content of the questions and the relevance to the context. As a result, eight principles were pri prioritized, as you were saying, uh, Phil, before. Uh, there's uh, 10 principles, and we prioritize eight with a total of 17 questions. For the second phase, uh, the assessments by each group of factors were made through on-site and visual assessments meetings uh, with the support of local facilitators uh, and the project team, having results of the evaluation by, by each group uh, with the mean scores for eight governance and equity principles. The final synth synthesis uh, workshop was attended by two representatives of each of the four groups that participated in this, in this assessment. Uh, we can go to the next slide, please. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the results showed a high level of consensus 
between actors regarding the possibility of improvement on all evaluated governance principles, especially on dispute resolution, negative impacts, and coordination and collaboration. The highest score principle was respect for actors, which indicated that there was a high level of recognition and respect for the uh, rights holders and decision makers involved in the governance and management of this, uh, of this park. This also implies that there, the, there was a strong sense of ownership of the conservation process and the high level of recognition of the le legitimacy of the area. No striking differences between groups were evident. One important funding, uh, finding was related to principle four, uh, related to transparency, information sharing, and accountability for actions and inactions, uh, where there was a need to clarify actors, responsibilities, and communication channels for conflict resolution. Uh, also, all stakeholders were willing to participate in, in future decision-making processes, conflict resolution, and communication strategies. And the actions identified to improve governance will be considered uh, for the Andaki management plan update that it's it's going on uh, right now. Next, uh, next slide, please. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the uh, lessons learned we want to share today um, are an essential role of the local facilitators, uh, the importance of verifying the ten principle, the governance principles. Uh, it is uh, for us uh, very important to prioritize questions and uh, adapt a little bit the language adap uh, adaptation. Uh, we suggest reviewing principles and questions prior to the evaluation phase uh, and making adjustments to these questionnaires with facilitator facilitators on site. This ensures that prioritization is aligned with the local needs and interests uh, of, the, of the area and the actors. Regarding the OCM criteria, the SAGE methodology could be a supporting tool to assess governance and equity, helping to evaluate if the area meets the criteria of being governed and managed, and to achieve sustained and effective contribution to um, biodiversity conservation and associated ecosystem services. And just the last, the last slide, please. Yeah, well, uh, we wanted to thank you all. Thank you for your attention. And for more information on this case, um, you can visit the uh, short ar article we have in the Parks um, the parks uh, magazine. Thank you so much, Phil. Thank you very much, Juliana. That was great. Now we're going to move very swiftly to my colleague, Ruth Pinto. And Ruth works with us in IID. She's done, uh, has an overview of a number of the assessments that were conducted early in the, um, in the early in the development of SAGE. And we're about to produce a, a, re a research paper on that. But she's going to give us a sneak preview of some of those results. Ruth, do you want to go ahead? Yeah, thanks, Phil. Um, yeah, so as Phil said, I'll be providing you with an overview of SAGE sites, including some results and follow-up actions to date. Um, what you see on screen is a map of the first seven SAGE sites. We'd like to highlight these as our partner organizations at these sites worked very closely with us in developing SAGE. Um, the paper that Phil mentioned also focuses on results from these sites. However, as Phil mentioned, SAGE has been used at 22 sites across Europe, Asia, Africa, and South America. These sites include both marine and terrestrial protected areas, indigenous and community conserved areas, as well as other effective conservation measures. Um, at each of these sites, the standard SAGE questionnaire and process that Phil presented were adapted to the needs and context of the site. So, for example, SAGE has been conducted using group workshops as well as individual surveys. And the assessment has to date been held both virtually as well as in person. Um, participants at these SAGEs have included men, women and youth from different indigenous and other resident community groups, resource user groups, protected area management agencies, NGOs, universities, the private sector, as well as various government departments. All of this is to highlight the immense versatility of SAGE. Um, but going back to the first seven SAGE sites, 
Uh, could you go to the next slide, please, Phil? Thank you. Um, so here are the SAGE results arranged by principle. Hopefully you can see this clearly enough in the room. But the blue bars show the average scores across all participants for each principles. And the symbols that you see on the bars represent different stakeholder groups. And put quite simply, the higher the score, the better the quality of equitable governance. Um, I'd like to draw your attention to three things. Uh, firstly, you, we can see here substantial differences between scores for each principle within a site. So, for example, if you look at Mulubezi and Zambia, that's the third graph from the left in the top row. Um, most participants highly scored P8 or the principle on equitable benefit sharing and P9 on the achievement of conservation objectives. However, they gave a lower score for P3, which is on participation in decision making. Um, in this, at this site, this revealed a serious issue as the site is a co-managed protected area with shared governance. Um, the second thing I'd like to highlight is that these graphs also demonstrate a spectrum of experiences from different stakeholder groups at each of the sites. So, for example, if you look at Mount Kitanglad, so top row, second from the left in the Philippines, you can see relative agreement between different stakeholder groups although symbols are quite closely clustered together. Um, this is a site that has invested substantially in shared governance for many years. While at MPEMT, so still on the top row, but the rightmost graph, that's a site in Greece that's a state-managed protected area. Um, and here you can see considerably different scores from participant groups. Overall, such major differences in scores from different stakeholder groups suggest a governance challenge. And finally, the third thing I'd like to highlight um, is differences between scores from different social groups within resident or local communities. So, for example, if you look again at the graph from Mulubezi or the one from Randolin, um, the orange and green circles on those represent women and men belonging to local communities. And you can clearly see that they have widely diverging scores for several of the principles. Uh, next slide, please. So what has happened since these initial sages took place? Um, well, throughout the assessment, as Phil mentioned, sage participants are encouraged to propose actions to address governance weaknesses that they themselves identify. So to learn more about the impact of sage and whether these ideas for action were taken up, a year after the assessments, we interviewed participants at three of the sites in Zambia, the Philippines, and Greece. Um, at Molobesi in Zambia, as you can see on screen, interviewees noted many actions taken as a result of SAGE, including, for example, the reservation of seats to increase participation of women in protected area-related meetings, a more routine sharing of protected area-related financial reports, the creation of a forum for stakeholders to better coordinate various projects and activities, and overall more decentralized decision-making to prioritize concerns at the village level. These actions were considered to help improve participation, coordination, transparency, and information sharing. Similarly, in the Philippines, interviewees reported improved coordination between stakeholders, particularly between some groups of indigenous peoples that participated in the SAGE and the Protected Area Management Board. They also reported improved information sharing and inclusion of diverse stakeholders in decision-making processes. And finally, in Greece, a representative from the Protected Area Management Group noted that the assessment report helped pro provide directions for their long-term plans to improve governance. So as demonstrated here, as well as through our case study presentations, SAGE is in fact making a difference. Um, and on that note, I'll now hand over to Thora for a live conversation with Tere on her experience facilitating a SAGE at an indigenous conserved area in Bolivia. Over to you, Thora. Thank you, Ruth. And just while Thora's coming up, I'd just like to stress that uh, we, we've talked quite a lot about adapting the tool to the needs of particular sites. So although the, the framework of principles is universal, the questions that go with each principle can be adjusted and adapted according to the situation of a site and, and the responses. In that respect, SAGE is also a bit different from, from MET, which has a standard set of questions most of the time. So that adaptation process is 
really important and makes the tool uh, more, more useful to the stakeholders at the site level. Can I hand over to you, Thora? Hello. So this is really great to be here uh, with Terra in Bolivia. So technical connections make it possible. Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, you've been closely involved. I, I think I have to see you there, right? Otherwise you see my... No, I have to walk over there, I was told. So um, you were heavily involved in the process and you were a great facilitator and everyone really um, cherishes the work that you have been doing, which is really great. Uh, working with the indigenous communities and for the very first time SAGE in Bolivia was tested um, in the working group that we had with Phil. We said we want to go beyond protected areas. We want to see whether it works in other contexts. So we have heard OECMs in Colombia and in the context of Bolivia we wanted to take it to indigenous communities. Does it work? So this is an indigenous territory, Takana Dos, uh, Takana Tu, uh, in the Amazon region. And, I, and Teresa was a fantastic facilitator of that. So I would like to ask you, Teresa, what were your um, experiences there? And feel free to answer in Spanish, and I'll try my best to translate. But if you want to do it in English, yeah, fine. <laughs> Entonces, Teresa, nos ¿Nos podrías contar un poquito? No te escuchamos, no te escuchamos. We are not hearing, Teresa. Can you, ¿Podrías poner tu micrófono? No te escuchamos. Can you hear? Ahora sí. Ahora sí te escuchamos. Perfecto, muchas gracias. Hola. Entonces, hola, hola Tere, un gusto bueno. saludarte. ¿Cuál ha sido el, la experiencia, digamos, el espíritu de todo esto que ustedes han llevado? Bueno, muchas gracias, Tora, muchas gracias a Phil, a todo el equipo de SAGE y buenas tardes, buenas noches a todos quienes están en el Congreso allá. Um, mi experiencia con el, con el SAGE eh, ha sido la adaptación de, de la herramienta a eh, todo el contexto indígena del lugar en el que yo estaba eh, trabajando, que es la TCO Tacana 2, que es una TCO de indígenas que se dedican principalmente a recolectar castaña, que es el Brazilian nuts que le llaman para, eh, que Bolivia es un gran exportador de, de, de esa, okay. de, de esa so, castaña. Entonces, briefly, uh, lo que briefly, hemos hecho nosotros es... This is a Brazil nut collecting communities in the Amazon area. So the, the biggest challenge was to firstly translate and adapt the SAGE tool to the context there of the indigenous communities. Yes, por favor, continúe. Pero haz pausas, por favor, para darme chance. Olvidé la traducción, No, está bien, está bien. Bueno, entonces, uh, la, la, el primer paso fue um, adaptar el, el lenguaje del cuestionario, porque creo que el cuestionario es un elemento eh, clave dentro de todo lo que es este, esta metodología de eh, evaluación. So the first step was, and it was really important, to adapt the language of the SAGE um, guidance there and of the matrix with the questions to something understandable. And that does not only mean that you translate it, if I may add, that you translate the language as such. It means that you really under try to understand and capture the cultural interpretation of the questions there. Uh -huh. Y el segundo reto, ¿cuál ha sido? O paso. Exacto. Sí, uh -huh. sí, sí. Uh, eh, luego eh, hemos hecho la uh, adaptación para aplicarlo en lugares donde no tenemos internet. Entonces, um, hemos eh, adaptado todo en papelógrafos, hemos utilizado diferentes me, formas para que ellos puedan um, ir viendo el, las respuestas y poder um, hacer un seguimiento también entre uh -huh. ellos, ¿no? Uh -huh. De lo que están haciendo, porque el SAGE es una metodología pensada para 
personas que tienen más contacto con la tecnología que los pueblos indígenas que están tan distantes. Thank you. So the, the second step was, uh, or the second challenge that they faced is going to the communities that don't, that are not uh, connected to the internet, that don't live in the technical world that we used to, um, are used to move. Um, so they really had to make an effort to make it meaningful to the people there without the technologies that we are used to have. Okay. Entonces, habría otro sí, reto porque gracias. si no quisiera, luego, resca quisiera rescatar realmente porque la intervención es un poco ¿sí? corta que tenemos. Necesitamos enfocar también en, en los grandes alcances, los grandes logros que ustedes han tenido ahí para entender un poco el proceso con las palabras del vicepresidente, por ejemplo, que pusiste ahí en tu informe como introductorio. ¿sí? Bueno, eh, la, lo que pasa es que el, el último reto era eh, hacer la diferencia entre una zona que es área protegida, que tiene eh, justamente el apoyo del Estado, respecto de estas otras zonas donde la gente hace conservación porque vive del bosque uh -huh. y necesita conservarlo, pero no tienen apoyo del Estado. Entonces, esa ha sido la tercera adaptación so, que creo que ha sido la más fuerte también. Uh -huh. y, um, so, a third challenge that was remarkable was exactly going beyond protected areas. So, they could not count on government support in that area. It's different, it's administered, governed by the local people there, so they could not support and count on, on the staff or on the financial means. And now the question, my, my next question was on where do you see, because we have very limited time here, where do you see the biggest contribution? What did it change? What happened during the process? Can you comment on that? Podrías comentar brevemente sobre los logros, lo alcanzado? Gracias. Sí, sí. Y yo creo que el principal logro, doctora, y creo que esto es aplicable en todos los casos para la metodología del SAGE y es lo más valioso que yo rescato entre varios, es que es una herramienta que te ayuda a poner actores en una misma mesa de diálogo y puedes eh, hallar entre todos soluciones sobre temas que han sido normalmente eh, relegados por la dificultad de hablarlos entre los actores porque involucran muchos intereses también de uh -huh. los actores. Uh -huh. La metodología te permite uh -huh. sentar a varios actores después de haber analizado cada grupo por separado, de sentarlos en una misma mesa alrededor del mismo cuestionario pero ya de manera propositiva. Eso uh -huh. yo creo que es un gran logro que nosotros hemos tenido uh -huh. con el SAGE y de lo cual estamos muy agradecidos con ustedes también. Perfecto. Gracias, Tere. Uh, well, she said that the biggest, um, the biggest objective was really reached there. That was to bring different actors to the table. So the first step was, um, well, if I may interpret a little bit freely, trust building because we have indigenous communities and we have government agencies and usually they are not necessarily on the same stage um, of understanding or interpreting the realities. Uh, you have different actors um, in the municip municipalities that have different interests. So what she sees or her team sees as the biggest um, gain in, in the methodology is to first of all bring each group of stakeholders there and try to come to terms interpreting the questions of the questionnaire there saying how would we jointly as a group as of stakeholders answer the question and then bring them together having done that process bring them together to first of all understand what the other things and feels and then start negotiating where they see big discrepancies thank you so much that was really valuable. Sí. Is there a final Muchas remark? Gracias. Ah, entonces, Muchas hay, gracias. hay una observación final, una recomendación que nos quisieras dar 
para seguir adelante con Sage. Sí. Is there a final recommendation that you have for the organizers sí. or the people developing, piloting the tool? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Muchas gracias. Sí, la recomendación o el pedido final para, para, esta, para la aplicación de la metodología fuera de áreas protegidas es eh, normalmente involucrar al ente del Estado que tiene tuición y jurisdicción sobre el área competente, que normalmente en este caso de conservación son áreas muy distantes y muy olvidadas por el Estado, por los Estados. Entonces, es vital dentro de todo este proceso responsabilizar al Estado de lo que es su competencia en esos lugares para que lo demás pueda fluir también ya viniendo de otras organizaciones. Pero es el Estado quien tiene que asumir su responsabilidad inicialmente. Creo que ese es un, un, un desafío en todo este sí. proceso. Perfecto, gracias. Um, Tere, uh, um, so the final recommend or the major recommendation that you would like to give is when we go beyond protected areas, uh, and especially in the context of indigenous people, we usually have to deal with very marginalized people, marginalized territories and regions. So the state usually is not very present there, not very visible. So we need to really make sure that the state actors, the government actors and agencies come to the table to listen to the people because that is the value of the tool. Thank you very much, Tere. Muchas gracias. Ha sido muy interesante. Y ojalá que te puedas quedar para la discusión. Gracias. So thank you very much for that one, uh, Tere. <laughs> So what we would like to ask you is where do you see and inviting also our, um, our audience online watching, um, where do you see the biggest challenges when we talk about equitable governance and when we talk about tools that we want to develop there? How, do you have any experience with it? Are there comments or comments? recommendations that you would want to make to either Jenny of um, in headquarters IUCN or to Phil representing IIED here and developing the tool so he's the big father of the tool. Uh, is there any comment out there that you would want to raise either in the virtual community or the ones present here? And we'll try to observe our chat session. Can we look into the chat as well, please? In that case, yes, we do have people. Thank you, Danny. Hi. I, I Could you know briefly present yourself, please? Oh, sorry. So, yes. Peter Mills from the Game Rangers Association, South Africa. Yes, thank you. Um, it, it came out in the end, but um, that period that is required to get the people up to speed before you actually do the assessment is quite a critical thing and that goes with and I've got quite a bit of experience with MET mm -hmm. which and and so it, it was going to be a question until it popped up so but I just think it's important to mention that mm -hmm. that sensitizing to get people on board to agree to what they're actually talking about but the other thing is, and, and a, you talk about a score, and and it's really a qualitative assessment. So, so when you look at the graphs and the scores like that, how much are they? Is there place for interpretation? Because with MET, I've found that people score, um, and and what the score is on the score sheet and what's happening on the ground is not a true reflection of, of what is happening. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I'd, I'd like okay. your interest, your your, yes. your comments on that. Yes, that's a very interesting and a very technical question. We'll g give that one to Phil. But before we do that, I'd like to collect the second question that we had a hand raised. And please, the ones that are watching online, uh, be ready to also be addressed with questions or raise your questions. Um, hello, yes. um, 
uh, Vasily Summer Researcher at the University of Cambridge, and we're part of the team that run this too in northern Greece. Um, and I just wanted to stress um, just one point, I think, which was mentioned. We run this too in the context of a more um, higher income country. Um, and it was quite easy to adapt it because it's an adaptable tool. So we didn't have, um, for the three days, to run it because it becomes very expensive for people who have to skip work for three days in a row. And you can, you're able to do it in a shorter period of time. And it's worked very well for us. I'm sure that the results wouldn't be the same as if we did it for slightly more. But it's still very functional. You get meaningful results. Um, even if you run it for a briefer period of time, and um, we found it easy to run. Um, so it's more of a common. Uh, okay, thank you. thank you very much. So in that case, we'll hand over to Phil for that very interesting and challenging technical question. And thank you for the comment, uh, having actively uh, been involved in the process. Thank you. Yeah, so my first comment would be you have to see this as an opinion survey. And, and as you said, you have to interpret them. And in fact, it's just like PRA in development. It, actually, the output isn't necessarily very important. What's important is the discussion that happens during the process and the ideas for action. Now, I can give you one example from Mulabesi again, which you probably know that area from, and Kafui in Zambia. So when they had the achieving objectives, the community gave the much higher score than the protected area managers, saying they thought they were doing really well on conservation. The response of the protected area manager was they haven't read the management plan. They don't know what the objectives are. And therefore, you know, we know we're not doing very well. Um, and that obviously highlights a real issue, that if the community thinks things are in good shape, but in reality they're not, that's a communication problem that needs to be addressed. So. You can only interpret the results. I was there, so I can tell you that. And the facilitators, when they write the report, will write that kind of thing in there. But there is a real risk if you just look at the graph. It looks very strange. What, what's going on there? Yeah. If I can just support what you've just said, is, is the value of the tool is in the discussion and not the score. And that's what people must, if they want to use these tools properly, all of them, SAGE, GAPA, SAPA, all of them. Um, it's not about the score, it's about the discussion and understanding and getting everybody on the same page. And if I could just respond that we resisted this for a long time. We didn't want to have scoring. We want, we, GAPA is a qualitative method. Essentially, it takes the same principles. It, it stimulates discussions about strengths and weaknesses, but there's no scoring. The problem is it's difficult to facilitate, and, and for uh, decision makers, it's difficult. Well, they're not very happy with the results because they can't like, get their head around it. So in the end, we went, we've gone for this option. Uh, we, we, from the, the, the earlier work, we got a very good understanding of the kind of issues that come up in these assessments and therefore we're able to develop questions which we know are very relevant, say, to participation or to fair law enforcement. Um, but, um, and I'm now confident that it works and I'm also confident that this type of tool based on MET would actually get much more traction, probably, than our wonderful GAPA, which is in-depth and fantastic, but it's going to be a niche, a niche thing. And it's also very sensitive. You have to be careful when you go into a deep dive on governance. You can open a, you know, a can of worms. <laughs> so this is also deliberately kept a little bit at that sort of surface level um, because then it should be something that could be used pretty widely in most situations. Just to the, um, the question you had over there, although we recommend using eight principles, in a number of sites they have only used four, including the lady here, Bertie, from, um, was in Cameroon at the time, uh, and it can be used actually as an add-on to MET, uh, and we're exploring that, but also as an add-on to our SAPA social assessment. So in a light form with just four principles, which I think is what they did in Greece at one of the sites, uh, it can also be still very useful. Thank you very much for the question and for the answer. And I think to our African friends, I would like to quote um, 
something that um, the Bolivian team wrote as a very first entry point of their report. And it reconfirms that the process is very important in SAGE for especially the local people. So in addition to what Phil just explained with the scoring and why the scoring, um, I think it um, really speaks to what you just said. And it says, it's the quote of a vice president of the region there. And they did not have a lot of exchange or dialogue with the indigenous people bef before that, as Terry explained. It's a very remote area. And he says, after the process, thanks to the analysis of these governance issues, we are going to create partnerships with the municipality and with the park rangers. After a long time, we are going to have a more fluid relationship with them. So that really um, speaks to what you just um, explained as that trust building and the process and talking to each other, recognizing the views and the values of the other and trying to work out solutions while you're sitting there and exchanging your views. Do we have other questions or comments in the room? Yes? Hello, my name is uh, Lorela Lazai. I am from Albania. I work with protected areas in, uh, in Albania. Uh, actually, we use MET as a tracking tool to understand how we are doing and is more uh, ori uh, result oriented tool rather than building relationships with the stakeholders. But one of the issues that we face uh, is the um, fact that people completing these tools or um, taking care of the whole process uh, uh, are very subjective on how they handle the whole um, process because most of the questions are open questions. You have discussions and uh, depends a lot on the perception how, how the persons that are um, uh, managing the whole process are, are looking at this process. So it's very important in my opinion that the same people take care every year and uh, run the, the process every year because every time we have different people from our agency um, um, using this tool we have different results and uh, because they understand the process completely in a different way. And this is very important. The people who, who will start the process should be completely aware how to use this tool and how to, uh, uh, what the perception should be. And secondly, uh, another important point, in my opinion, is to formalize these tools and to, to make it a standardized tool that could be used and integrated into uh, at the policy level because I think these are very important tools to understand what should be done for the next year, where we should be more focused, where the budget should be allocated more or what are the most the, the needs uh, for the next year mm -hmm. so thank you very thank much you. that gives us uh, that hints towards next steps and what is needed before i give that question to jenny uh, from headquarters iucn what is her take on next steps i would like to give the word to phil to what are your thoughts about the scoring and about the continuity of the people involved in the process is that necessary is it recommendable to also reach out to others over time? Where do you see, how do you see that? Well, one difference you have here is you've got community, um, NGOs and private sector who, um, at least the community and the private sector don't tend to change so much over time. And in the discussion, if a park manager says they think the score should be, like I said, on um, achieving objectives, two, well they don't say two, they pick a response which corresponds to two and the community say, ah, oh, no, 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 you know, it's one. Okay, so they don't negotiate but they give reasons for why they think two is a bit over optimistic and it should be lower and then they have a discussion and they may not reach consensus but their different evidence is noted down and hopefully they agree on an action to narrow that difference, like in this case, sharing the man explaining the management plan to the community, actually it's a CRB, the committee of the community members who manage the area, who were not aware of what the management objectives were. So, you know, it's, 
And the one thing you, you should never do is compare assessment results from one site with another. Um, and of course, people at higher levels want to do that and point the finger. That is an absolute, even with MET, you shouldn't be doing that. Um, but we struggle with that. Thank you very much, Phil. So especially um, we see that um, with the social sciences, um, we need to look a little bit beyond only data, hardcore um, percentages and whatever. This is highly, it fluctuates and it depends on the people. And my very personal take on that one is involve people over time, don't be shy. Don't be shy. I've seen um, negotiations on the table take place. They said, this is clearly a one. No, this is a five. This is a three. This is... It's really what Phil said when they come to sit down and say, okay, why do you say this would be a one? What are your observations? What have you seen? And then have the... Well, trust the people that it evolves over time. It's learning and engage them over time. So the last comment from the audience is here from Bertilla, and then I'll hand over to Jenny for final remarks. Thank, Thank you, you, Tora. I just want to come back to her question and what Phil said. It's very difficult to have the very same people over time. For one reason, most of the people involved in the process are government officials, and usually they are posted into different areas. Regarding also the community, they usually elect someone who will represent them. And next year, it might not be the same person. And given some time, even the outcome of most of the assessment, they might decide that next year, this person will not be part of the assessment. So it's really difficult to have people, like what you just said, um, hardcore data cannot simply be attached to um, individuals. It is the community that we are working with. It is the national park that we are assessing. So definitely the scores also have quite a high level of credibility. Talking about experience from what we did, the community had to vote on the different key aspects. You know, we have all the list down, they will prioritize and then they will vote. Based on the different vote, we can then move forward into the analysis and crafting up uh, the action plan. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think very wise words. Uh, so we have to live and put up with getting closer to this or, or getting the trends, getting the values, getting the perceptions. And that is really and, and um, the contact between the different actor groups and trying to understand the other. That really is a very important value. It's not so much the scoring. Um, as was said several times. Jenny, the last word to you and please closing because we are already have reached the, the final okay. minute. Okay. Okay. Um, just to say thank you to everybody for joining us today and thanks to our panelists and speakers. Um, the next steps for us really in IUCN, it's all, it's all really about the green list and I'm not talking about the green list from sort of a, a large programmatic point of view. I'm talking about it so that it, it becomes the forum. It really becomes the place where these processes can have that continuity. We heard about the challenges on the ground of changing staff and, and the difficulty of facilitators. And, and it's really hoped that the green list can be this sort of anchoring process that is permanently set up in a given country. We have it already now in 14 countries greenlisted sites were expanding into 35 countries and more and so really the plan is that the greenlist can provide that um, forum for this kind of work the dialogue and the site level assessments and continuing that um, learning and so that we're constantly learning and and you know it's it's really all about governance vitality in the end so i'd like to say once again thanks to everybody um, and maybe you join me in giving a round of applause to our to our speakers to Tora and to phil um, today and also to our case study providers and yeah i think phil has one final comment and then we have to close thanks again and this is more of a personal reflection having worked on these issues of governance in conservation and engaging communities in governance for 30 years. We used to call it co-management or collaborative management, and now it's become shared governance. Most of what I've seen and what, what we see when we work with CBD are efforts from a national level 
to try and improve governance and make it more equitable. And to be honest, I haven't seen a huge amount of success in that. But these bottom-up initiatives are different. I have really seen things, a level of enthusiasm and energy, and my vitality, as you say, and real change. Very simple things like we need some more, I mean, this is, can be taken the wrong way, but we need some more women in the committee. Well, also, they have to have a voice and we have to listen to them. And then a couple of months later, that's happened. Or we need to share the, the financial accounts for a revenue sharing scheme. Three months later, it's happened. So these things can actually move quite quickly. Uh, and, you, and over time, small steps can turn into something which is really the kind of transformative change we're looking for. And, you know, my argument is, and I put it here, that working from the bottom up, the challenge is scale. But there's so much going on in this space that is good. And, and so much could be done to to make more of, of this and join the dots and, ex, and accelerate it. And I, I think that is how, as that, that brief is a thing we've just written in IID, but the key is in equitable governance and is equitable governance from the bottom, building it from the bottom. And, and that's the note I'd like to, to end on. Thanks, we need to, I think we need to move pretty quick.